Quite our set. <laughs> Hi, Vogue. I'm Beverly Johnson, and I'm here today to talk about my first American Vogue cover. If you don't know why that is significant, I was the first African American to grace the cover in 1974. My father was a steel laborer, and my mother was a nurse. The only magazine at our house was Ebony. I was quiet, an introvert. I was a competitive swimmer. I swam at Junior Olympics. I had dreams of going to the Olympics. I was an honor roll student. The civil rights movement that I saw on television, that's when I got the idea that I wanted to become a lawyer. Because I thought by somehow I would be able to help that situation. I, I don't know, that's where I got it from. I had nothing to do with the fashion industry whatsoever, and it was my mother who made me work in a fashion boutique in Buffalo, New York, that led me to the world of fashion. Mimi, the manager of the Ginny shop, would always tell me if I ever give up this idea about becoming a lawyer, I should become a model, which I thought was ludicrous at the time. And so she gave me this telephone number for someone in New York. I went off to school in Boston. I was 17 going on 18, and I found myself out of a part-time job, so I remembered I had that telephone number. So I had to convince my parents that I wanted to work as a model part-time, just for the summer, as opposed to going to college in Northeastern University. It was a hard sell. My dad wasn't having it. So my mother went against my father's wishes and called the number and we got an appointment with Condé Nast, which was in the Gray Bar building in New York City. So off we go, my mother and I. I don't think I've ever been on a plane before at that time. And we met the great Alex Lieberman. I was just mesmerized. And finally, after waiting there all day long, they came out and said, we want to take your daughter on a 10-day trip to Fire Island for Glamour Magazine. My first modeling assignment. Now, looking back on it, I realize how unbelievably fortunate I was that day. I mean, the chances of that happening are, I don't know, but I guess meant to be. In the 70s, there weren't any black makeup artists or black hairdressers, so they really didn't know how to manage my hair. And as far as makeup goes, there weren't many foundations made for people of color. Not only that, the actual film that the photographer shot did not have a spectrum color for people of color. So it was an industry that was tailored around the white, blue-eyed, blonde woman. That was the American ideal of beauty at the time. That was the girl next door, not Beverly Johnson. We had just come out of the 60s in the civil rights movement, and you know, as far as we knew, we had overcome with black models everywhere. So by 1973, I was a working model, and I was traveling the world. I got with Eileen Ford, which was the biggest and best modeling agency in the world at that time. My face was on all of the Glamour magazine covers. People would recognize me in the street. It was a big deal, I mean, for me. So I had a meeting with Eileen Ford. I said, Eileen, this is what I would like to have. I would like to have a cosmetic contract. I would like to write a beauty book. And I would like to get the cover of Vogue magazine. She said, you'll never be on the cover of Vogue magazine. She said, who do you think you are? I knew I was not gonna get that cover there, so I changed agencies. I went to Wilhelmina to get that Vogue cover. So the idea that there had never been a black person on the cover of Vogue never crossed my mind. But being on the cover meant that you won the Oscar. It meant that you had a gold medal. And that's where I wanted to go. I wanted to be the top of that profession. And not just the top black model, I wanted to be the top model, period. I knew I needed that Vogue cover. And I remember walking into Wilhelmina's office. She had her feet up on the desk. She had a slice of pizza in one hand and a cigarette in the other, and a can of Coke was on the table. And she says to me, I'll get you the cover. 
I remember it like it was yesterday. I did have a sense that everything was a little heightened, but everything's heightened when you do a Vogue shoot. I think it was $100 a day or $75 a day. That's an editorial rate. When I was doing an editorial shoot, there could be a beauty shot that would end up being a cover. I did a tremendous amount of editorial work for Vogue, and I did a, a tremendous amount of work with some of the greatest photographers on the planet, Irving Penn, Richard Avedon, Francesco Scavullo. So I knew that if I did get a cover, it would have to come out of one of those shoots. But that was not in my mind. I was working to do the best editorial work that I could do. I remember Francesco Scavullo, and I remember him saying, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I never really seen him get really, he gets excited, but never that, that intense when he was taking these beauty shots. And I think we made magic that day. I remember getting a phone call a couple of months later from Wilhelmina, and usually your booker calls you, not Wilhelmina. And she said to me, are you sitting down? And it was six o'clock in the morning, I was lying down, you know. And she says, you did it, you got the cover. I said, oh, the cover of what? She said, the cover of Vogue. I said, oh, you're kidding. She said, it's on the stands. It's, it, it, it's, uh, is it at the newsstand now? She said, yes, the cover is on the newsstand now. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I remember running down the street and there was a newsstand there, but I remember the banner, that, that Vogue cover was the banner around the newsstand. I'm in line and I, I, I get there and I said, you know, the Vogue cover and he gives me the Vogue cover. I'm like, this is me. And people were like, lady, would you hurry up? We, you know, we got to trade you. And I had forgotten my money to pay for the magazine. And so I'm telling the guy, this is me on the cover. He said, that's you? He said, lady, if that was you, you could afford to buy the magazine. I said, but I live right around the corner. He said, give me the magazine back. So anyways, before I run back home, I make a collect call to my mother. And I'm, going, I'm screaming and running. She's screaming with her. She said, what are we screaming about? I said, I made it. I, I'm on the cover of Vogue magazine. And my mother is screaming. My father's yelling, what happened? What happened? It was just the highlight of my life. The next day, I had to go to work. I went to work and you know, you go into makeup studio and all the girls are there. And I was always the only black model on the set. And I walk into the makeup room thinking I'm gonna get this big like, ah! And it was silence. I'm like, hi, and everybody's like, looking at themselves in the mirror. I'm going, no, they can't be upset about the Vogue cover. Yeah, they were upset about the Vogue cover. What are you doing on the cover of Vogue? But then, I go and I'm going up to the agency, you know, all the black models or whatever coming and going and everybody's like kind of ignoring me. I'm like, hi, uh, yeah, uh, hi. I was getting it from both sides. And what happened after that was all of the press. They said, how does it feel to be the first black woman on the cover of Vogue magazine? I was like, whoa, I am? Oh, and then all of a sudden it all made sense. All of the whispers, all of the shade that was being given to me by the white models and the black models, it all made sense. So I did the Larry King show. I said, excuse me, I'm the top model, period. Well, New York Times picked up the story. She's the top model, period, became this whole controversy. Because I was, I mean, I was on the cover of magazines around the world. I was the top model at that moment in the world. And I wasn't gonna be categorized into this little slot when I'm really in this slot here. And I wanted to own that place and that space changed my life. Being the first black woman on the cover of American Vogue and the impact that that had globally I realized I really had some soul searching to do, but also some history to know about who I am, where I came from, and really what this struggle is really about. The civil rights movement wasn't as permanent as I thought as a young person. That Vogue cover meant that we were being acknowledged and saw that we too are American and we too are beautiful. So it was a huge responsibility to a young woman that just wanted to go out and party and meet a nice guy. And now all of a sudden I had this really heavy weight on my shoulders and I wanted to make sure that I live up to that moment. And I do feel that hiring black models is good for your bottom line as a business. I don't know why they didn't know that all along, but it is and I think that the floodgates really opened up because if you don't see someone and you don't 
sit down and talk to someone. They're not a part of your world. And so we really became a part of the fabric of fashion in America because we were being seen on the covers and in the pages. But now I think it's important that we participate in the economics of those industries that are making money off of uh, our cultural talents. So that's why I came up with the Beverly Johnson rule to the fashion industry. I suggested that you interview at least two people. You don't have to hire them, but two people for the board of directors of these companies, because we all know that policy is made in the board of directors and they pass it down. I don't know what my legacy will be or what that will look like. I'm a transformative person. I'm a positive person, and I believe in people. I believe in the human spirit. So that would be a nice legacy.